Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Ladies and Gents Listen Up. Wow, I am so excited today because we are on a series regarding loveless marriage, and it's kind of evolving into a workshop, which I think is just wonderful. So we're in the midst of a mini series, and this is part three of the series. So before we get started, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this information with somebody else. So my co-host is Mr. Rufus Carpenter from Business Creation Institute. How are you today, sir? I'm doing very well, Dr. Liz. Thanks for asking, by the way. Awesome, awesome. I love your different changes of scenery. It gives us opportunity to see some of nature while we're talking about this relationship stuff, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Because so, I'm enjoying the holiday. I'm on my way to Washington, that Washington, D.C., North Virginia area to visit my son. Uh, okay. Him and his his family and uh, our our family collectively are going to spend Christmas there in that Northern Virginia area. Uh, as I say, Christmas. Let me uh, once again. I want to uh, let everybody know that you know, we're in the Advent season, the four weeks before the coming of the birth, and what we're doing in Advent season, we're getting ready for the birth. We're preparing for for our Savior to be born, and then that and that st that stops on the twenty fourth, and then from the twenty fourth on, it's the second season second part of christmas which is christmas tide which is the four weeks after the birth all right okay. so okay. with that dr liz what what our agenda today looks like all right well we're going to first you know we cannot leave out you know our other co-host which is grandma cookie jar secret we always okay. have to start with a, with a with a piece of wisdom or a nugget so grandma cookie jar today says today is a good day to make someone's day and wow how appropriate for relationships right and what the intent of our relationships are, right? I'm going to flip it over. And yeah, give me says, that again. Let me hear that again because I'm outside. Okay. It says, today, Let me hear it again. today is a good day to make someone's day. Oh, awesome. Good day. Okay. I think that's appropriate for relationships. And on the flip side, yes, owning less is way better than owning more. Okay, awesome. Only less, all right. Hmm. That one takes Absolutely. a little work, Dr. Lee. <laughs> it does, but I'm just thinking about something. Owning less, meaning that it is way better than organizing more. If you're putting like all of your, and I, I related to relationships, if you're putting your all into a relationship, it's saying it's way better than, and I, Related to relationships is way better than spreading yourself thin. That's how I took it. So hey, you would you would take a woman's point of view. <laughs> of course. I have to represent, right, ladies? Right, right. So <laughs> Okay. So with that right. being said, with that being said, we're gonna kick off and I'll put it in your court to kick off part number three of Loveless Marriage. Okay, before we get into that, once again, I want to thank you for the platform, because your platform, Dr. Liz, is doing a lot for the community. Uh, I've gained a lot just by sitting here with you over these few uh, uh, podcasts. You give me a chance to, to work my craft and, and improve my gifts. So thank you for that. I really You're appreciate welcome. you. Now, today, we're talking about what day part three of Loveless uh, Relationships or Marriage. To talk today, we have to make a decision, Dr. Liz, because I noticed our sequences or our sessions have been going about 30 to 40 minutes. And I think that 30 minutes is kind of tops for, for audience participation. So I don't want to go over that. The problem is we've painted ourselves into a corner. Right now, we're in a part now where you, you've got your beginning and you got your ending, but now we're right in the middle. And in the middle, there's two parts to the middle. <laughs> there is the uh, bridge, which means getting over that. And I'll give you the proper name for the bridge when we get into it. But the bridge, and then the other one is the root. You being the herbalist, you might favor more the root. <laughs> but those are the two parts we have today. So today we got to make a decision. Are we going to tackle the bridge, getting from point A to point B, beginning to your end? And we're going to bridge that gap. Or are we going to talk about the root? The root is the baggage that you bring into a relationship, whether you create it or whether it's coming from your past somewhere. We're going to talk about, we've got to pick which one of those things we'll talk about. But I'm going to give you a minute to ponder on that, Dr. Liz. And what I'll do, I'll give us a review 
not so much of the other two podcasts, but I'm going to give you a review of the frameworks and the concepts that we have talked about over the series. And they're pretty much are the why. The first one is the why. And why, why are you in a relationship? Why are you in this relationship? What is the payoff or the benefit that you're getting out of it? That's your why. Then we talked about the who. The who is the process or the person that's going to help you to get out of or get further ahead or help you benefit from where you are. And we said that who may not be you. That who may be an outside source, because if it's you, more than likely it's going to be a blame game, whether I'm responsible or not like that. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about who can come in your life and make a difference in you getting forward faster. The next is the what. The what is that how do you go from where you are, the beginning, to your future? What? What is going to get you there? What's going to, what's going to help you get forward in the future? What mechanism or what type of structure or what's going to put in place to bridge over that? And that's your what. Then we talked about concepts. We talked about the concept that Dr. Liz and I went back and forth on. The life and time is broken down into two parts. The parts are the beginning, your past, your future, which is your expected outcomes or goals, we didn't have a present, <laughs> but Dr. Lee is one a present, but we said if you have to have a present, we're going to call that in the moment, or we're going to call that middle, because we want to include everybody. We don't want to leave anybody out, okay? This is Christmas time. We feel like giving. That's good old <laughs> so, compromise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to give you that. Then we talked about the big dogs in the fight are mindset. Mindset is how you view what you're going through or where you want to go. Your vision is such a way that it's almost like you've already seen it. You've already done it. And the, that mindset gives you momentum. It gives you clarity. Then the next big dog in the fight is skill set. Skill set is you're doing the work putting your hands in, getting involved, getting messy, making a difference. And when you do the skill set, you also, you're working on it. You're getting deposits back into your life, into your soul. And these deposits become nuggets to help you grow. And we say, if you do it enough and work it enough, it's called mastery. You get better at it. Okay. Then the last part of that skill set, the last part of that was, tool set tool set is that mechanism or that person or that procedure or that system that's going to get you through to the ne next side you get to leverage something whether it's a person or whether it's a broadcast like a podcast like dr liz podcast you get to leverage that to help you get to your future and that's what separate him separate us from the animals in that we understand how to leverage things. We work with tools where most animals don't. But humans, we average, we, we leverage. And that's what can be the who, or it can be a uh, mechanism, all right? And if you do the mindset, skill set, and tool set, that give you assets to your better, brighter future, to a more predicted outcome. And now, since we talked about future, we, we also say the concept of future focus. Future focus meaning you're working towards your desires. Future focus, you're working towards your desire. You don't have one foot in the past holding you back. You're going straight working on your future focus. Then we said compelling future. Compelling future is you working, moving towards your, your desired outcome. You have a burning vision in your head what that looks like for you. And that's, and that's bringing us to our success work. Our success work was broken down into two parts. The first part of success work, we dealt with the why, the beginning, and we wanted you to take a serious look at where you are in your current relationship. And if you took the time to do this, it gave you a great perspective of what's going on in your life. Because now this is this is not book this is not book stuff we're talking about. We're talking about your life. 
We're talking about you. What you put in it is what you're going to get out of it. If you did the success work and actually looked at your life and you said, hmm, me and Honey been together all this time. We've been together for about 10 or 20 years. And, and I want to take a serious moment to see where I'm at in this relationship. Where, what's, what, what's going on inside of me? What's going on inside our relationship? And you sit down and you look at yourself. You saying, Dag, you saying that I love her. I don't know if she loves me. Or maybe I don't love her. Maybe I love the comforts of her. Maybe I love what she's doing for me. Uh, maybe I love what he's doing for me. Or maybe I love what we create together. I don't love her or she don't love me, but I love the things and I love this, this little bubble that we create together called our marriage or our relationship. Maybe I'm comfortable knowing, uh, I'm comfortable knowing the place I am versus what's out there for me. So I am comfortable here and I don't want to upset the apple cart. If I push a little hard, she may go or he may go. So I'm going to stay right here and I'm right, I'm right here in this bubble and I, and I appreciate what you're doing. I'm comfortable. I don't have to worry about the lights going to be on. I don't have to worry about uh, are my kids going to have somewhere to come visit me at. I don't have to worry about uh, is my meal going to be done. I don't have to worry about what the next vacation we're going to go on. I don't have to worry about my insurance. All these things, all these things are happening in my relationship right now. That's the why. So I'm satisfied. I'm, I think I'm satisfied. I feel that I'm content right here. Mm -hmm. I'd say right here. <laughs> so that's, that's the why. That's the beginning point. At least you know where you are. If you're honest to yourself, and you took the time to write it down and make it plain, you know where you are. And if you're content with that, great. If you're not content with that, then you might want to go to our part two. <laughs> our part two of the uh, success work. Part two of the success work was that I wanted you to take the time and talk about your future. I wanted you to look 12 months into your future. And this, and I think it was December 25th when we actually said, no, December the 15th when we said this. De it was December the 15th, 2022. And I asked you to look at December the 15th, 2023. And I wanted you to envision your life, your relationship in the best possible it could be. I wanted you to see yourself living into your full potential. What do you envision? What do you want for your life? What do you want for your relationship? What do you want your relationship to look like? And Dr. Liz asked me the question is, should I look at it for how I'm going to be? Or how should I look at it how me and my spouse are going to be? Or should I look at it from this point of view, that point of view? It's whatever is important to you. This is your vision. This is you looking at your future. So if you're looking at it just in your own light, how you're gonna how you gonna operate in that future, great. If you're looking at it how you and your partner together as a union gonna operate in that future, great. If you're looking at if you really did the success work properly in 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 the why in week in our first week, if you did that right, your future might not include this boo. <laughs> it might include another boo. <laughs> I like it. I like that. <laughs> I like that. A couple of things that I want to chime in on with that because you're absolutely right. A couple of things that you said. The, the when you and, and I have Are you chiming now? I'm chiming. You are chiming now. You only finish. Let me chime in right at this point because it ties in to what you're talking about right now. It ties into that piece because when you talked about the, I think it's the fear of loss. When you talk about all of the things that the relationship brings, that's one I, I hear. This is what I hear, fear of loss. And then the second thing I hear is that oftentimes we're so engrossed in like the wedding, right? That's like what's happening in the wedding versus what happens in the marriage after everybody's gone and now the two of you are together. You know, you're so engrossed in all of this, you know, so, so I get that. I just wanted to pull that out so, I, so our, our, our viewers could have just a minute to process and maybe even take some notes. So go ahead and finish on that part. But I think I do want us to talk about the root. I think that's the next 
the next topic for our session right now. Okay, great. So I guess what she said, a great wedding, a marriage don't make. <laughs> it has to be a little work in there somewhere. Sorry <laughs> to say, but that was my testament. So go ahead. I <laughs> but now, like I was saying, your future, your future, how you visit your, your best possible future for 2023, December the 15th, 2023, may or may not include this booth. Okay. Now, so if your desire for you and your mate and you figure there's something that there, there's enough there that you can work with, work through or work for or however you want to phrase that, because I don't want to put words in your mouth because this is so whatever it takes to make that future relevant to you and your situation. That's what we're talking about. Now, if your future includes the current person in your life. Awesome. Awesome. Because now you can say, if, for instance, if this is my future and I want to include the person in my life right now, I would say, look, I would sit down to myself and say, hey, look, uh, I, I'm looking for December the 15th, 2023 to be exciting for me and my mate. I want, I, I, vision, I vision myself doing everything I can to make her possibly love me even better. I want, I want to do everything I can to show her that I love her better. I want her to see in me what I see in her. And that love and passion is so strong and so deep that no one or nothing can come between us. No one or no, nothing can separate us because we know the jewel that we have in each other. We have truly became one flesh in the fact that we know now we're living not just our old life, we're living our bold life. Because here, why should she or why should I expend energy trying to find someone else out on the outside when we can use that same energy to cultivate something stronger on the inside. So I see myself and I see hopefully my mate are working together as one to make our life a better, 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 more better life going forward. And that's how I see, that's what I see me standing in 2023, uh, December the 15th being. And it was just that simple. That was our success work. That, and, and, and in a minute, we'll come back to that. And I think someone's going to share their success work this week. I am. <laughs> but now, but then we talked about, then Dr. Dr. Liz uh, um, brought up the word journaling. And she brought up the importance of journaling. And she even gave you a link of how you can find, find a journal. Because journals are how you use them. I'm hoping that one day she'll give a podcast on how to use a journal and how to get the most out of your journal. Because some people think of journaling as going and recording what you did in the past. I envision a journaling or something that I share what's going on right now and how I can set myself up for a better future because I'll journal what I'm looking for my future to be. So I'll say, for instance, in my journal, I'm thinking that I'm going to journal what happened the last week, and I'm going to journal how can I have fixed that going forward. And I'll put that down. I'll put three or four takeaways that I could get better at, and I'll put in three or four things that I stumbled on. And I'll make and I'll use that to actually give me a platform to go forward with. And I'm hoping that Dr. Liz will take a podcast one day and talk about journaling so we all can benefit from it. Because in my mind, I think a journal will stop us from wasting time, will stop us from procrastinating, and it'll keep us from being overwhelmed. Because like she always said, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And if we put that as part of our journal, we can break down the pieces like I'm doing right now in this, in this lineup I'm giving you of our, our, our framework and concepts we went through over these last couple of modules. I've made them together, okay? Now, with all that said, Dr. Liz, we've got a choice. The choice is you got to talk. We want to you. You make the decision. Since it's your podcast, I'll go have you have you direct me to go. We can either talk about the bridge, and the bridge is start putting together solutions between where we are, our past, that uh, success work one, and then our future success work two. The bridge is helping us get from beginning to future. That's the bridge. That's one thing we can decide to do today, or we can do the root. The root is we can start working it on the baggage that we all bring into our relationships or we cre create along the way in our relationships. 
And a lot of times the baggage is created because we don't communicate. So that's the root. So we're going to talk about the roots. So Dr. Liz, you get to decide which one we're going to do today. We're going to do the root or we're going to do the bridge. I think we should do the bridge. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I think we should do the root. That, that just sounds, it just seems, it comes, it comes better in succession for me. And a couple of things that you, that you spoke on. Yes, we do have it planned to do not only journaling, but also how to set up your journal because there's a specific way that you can set up the journal to help you as you continue to move forward. So there's a couple of things that we have planned. Um, we do have the book review cafe coming up with, 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 uh, more on journaling, more on, uh, you know, how you do this, um, how, how to set it up, how to, you know, and, and, and tools so that we can continue on the success work that you're talking about in the relationship series over here, but actually going to the different tools that you can actually, you know, link to on our, on our channel that we're launching specifically for personal development for um, authors and for creators. So that's coming up in 2023. Okay. You know, awesome. so yeah. So and talking about um I think the root work, I think that's that's something that we do before we get over to the bridge. I think that would be great. We can save the bridge for next week. Okay. All right. So now so we're gonna talk about the roots. That's that's, that's our that's our part for the rest of the day. All right. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the root. Okay. First, now there is a my personal pastor by a guy by the name of David Bradley, Dr. David Bradley. He's my personal pastor. And what I'm going to talk about now is more of him talking to me, because that's why I got this concept from him. He's a mentor of mine. So when you're talking about root, you first wonder, hmm, what are we really talking about here? We're talking about the reason why you do certain things. The reason why, for instance, I can, I, there's a relationship I've been in. I can think about relationships I've been in my life where no matter what happens, no matter what, it always end up the same doggone way. Man, I be saying, I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a better job myself. I'm going to try to do better to maybe get a better outcome in my relationship. And I notice no matter what, it's the same, it comes out that same, same thing. If, you, if you've been married or been in a relationship before, and you got rid of this one person. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm using the wrong words. <laughs> if you realized you had a bad match <laughs> and it just didn't quite work, and you, you and that person felt that you should, y'all should look elsewhere for y'all love, romance, or sparkles, or whatever, <laughs> then you wonder. But then you say, okay. Then you get to your next relationship, and. Three, four, five months or a year in, it's the same thing all over again. It's the same gravy, the same soup with the same flavor. <laughs> you ask yourself, mm. then you say, okay. Then you decide this ain't going to work. Then you change that out. <laughs> then, I'm sorry. Then you decide you got another bad match. <laughs> no, you, 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 you speak your truth. You change it out for a different model, but you keep on getting the same ingredients with a different model. You keep choosing the same person, just in a different body. Hmm. Yes. I think you that's what you're talking about, root work. It's, it's, the problem is the fruit you're getting is coming from the root. <laughs> now, go ahead. Okay. You, you, no, but you're the common denominator. I'm working through this with you because we yes. haven't talked about this stuff. Yes. So. Your fruit is being your fruit is being manifested from your roots. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, your roots. When you get to looking at this, your root may come from what we call first the law of first truths. And this once again, this is not this is not my stuff. I I I gleaned this from Dr. David Bradley. And your first fruit is how do you first get your knowledge about life? As a kid, you get it from the way you raised from your family, what you've right. seen with your mother and father, your peers, your your siblings. That's how you get a lot of your information. Right. You get it from your school, schooling you went to. You get it from your friends you hang out in the street. You get it from your pastor, your church. You get it from you get it from your sorority, uh, sor sorors. You get it from all different places. 
You get it from your best friend. You get it from your fishing buddy. It's what you've seen and what you start modeling. It's your comfort zone. And, and I want I want to add something to that. I just did a show on I did a show on PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, and exactly what you're talking about it ties in together because when when you are when you have a traumatic event that happened in your life, and a lot of people don't understand when you have a traumatic event, a part of you if you do not go through the proper channels, the therapy, the working through it, part of you stays traumatized in that trauma. So if you had a, a and I talked about it on this show, I had I had a, a traumatic incident happen when I was three years old. And I didn't understand. And I talk about me so people can really, you know, understand the transparency of it and relate to it. At three years old, I had a traumatic event. You know, it's also in the daddy-daughter dynamic, my book. But at three years old, I didn't go through therapy. I didn't get help. Nobody helped the young girl, the young girl, girl baby that, that was traumatized. So as I grew up, that 30% of me was still in trauma. So I'm only operating and making decisions out of 70%. Some of it new information, some of it family information, wherever it came from um, is, is, is dysfunctional. Now, then you have another trauma that happens, you know, a bad marriage or domestic violence, domestic violence in my case. Now you have the, the young girl, 30% is in trauma. Then you have another 30% that's in trauma from domestic violence. Now you got 60% that's still in trauma or reacting or reactive in trauma. Then you have the other 40% that's making all of these adult decisions. So when you say root, we're talking about the other, the, the outer influences, the environmental influences, but we forget about the internal influences. And that's when you say the root is yourself. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. And she just, and she just and she, uh, Dr. Liz, you just commented a lot. Uh, you just put out a lot there, and there's a lot to unpack. One, you just said that your surroundings, your environment becomes a part of who you are, or who you who, who help shape who you are. And then your internal things, what happened inside of your own mind, inside of your own heart, shapes who you are. I, I, I got to be, I got to be vulnerable here. I have to confess, I, I've suffered from PTSD. And I didn't realize that I have like I'm I'm double I got a double trauma. So when I came up in my family, and my family was dysfunctional, and there's some things that I that I've learned I've learned coming up. I learned as my first learning as a child, and I take them into my relationship now. And I was in Desert Storm. In Desert Storm, I saw some things, and the trauma made me realize that I can't trust anybody. I can't let anybody get close. When you get close to me, it, it I get fearful. And these are something, and that's one, of, that's one of the reasons why I'm glad that you and I have had this dialogue and we have your platform to work through. And that's why I'm talking and teaching this because this is, a lot of times as teachers, we teach what we need the most. Mm, that's good. And I'm teaching this because I need relationship therapy, relationship healing. I need yes. to look across the aisle and see back in the mirror and see myself before I can look at you or before I look at my spouse or my significant other or whoever I consider my boo yes. I first have to know me what I bring to the table and, and see that's good I think we don't do that work we don't do that work on ourselves and, and for me personally I've taken years out to do the work on myself because I didn't want to continuously repeat that same pattern and and I and I took a, a honest look at myself. I'm bringing me to the table. I'm not blaming myself for you know for attracting narcissistic men or attracting abusive men. I'm not I'm not that what their actions is their actions. That's their responsibility. Mm -hmm. But my my point or or issue was to protect me. Right. And to bring to heal whatever it was that was causing that root in me, whatever was causing me to allow that type of person that close to me. So think about it. Just paint this picture. You just said in your dysfunction, this is what we have a lot of these, a lot of unhealthy relationships going on, because you said in your point of, of perspective, because of your trauma, you were taught to, 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 to run when it was when it got too close or or because of, you know, fear. Right. Fear of getting too close. In my instance, it was wanting the love. 
And so if you have, now say you have those two people come together, you have one person that's desiring and wanting, and, and then you have the other person that's, this is too much because now they're fearing it. So how are you ever going to come together if you don't heal those issues that are going on? And if you don't realize that PTSD is going on on both sides, anxiety, you take it personal. We, we take it personal. What's wrong yes. with me? And especially if you're yes. if you, you if you had this function where your insecurities are at heightened levels, now you feel insecure. Now you feel rejected, and you feel rejected. And people don't handle rejection well, especially if you're not at a healed place. So oftentimes, mm-hmm. because we don't want to be alone, we, we 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 go get into these unhealthy relationships, and we continue to repeat that pattern over and over again. And so that's why I believe that, you know, the attraction to a podcast such as the Oasis Wellness of Life, mm-hmm. it, and when we hit those issues, and I, someone just told me the other day that they're so grateful, and it was a man, he said it was, he was so grateful that we touch on the, the overall wellness of life. So we're talking about mind, body, we're talking about business and money, mm-hmm. but we're talking about the, the issues that we're all painted up, and we're, and we're working around fragmented. Yes, yes. You and, and, and you you hit the point so well because if 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 I'm going east and you going west in the same relationship, that's a that's a tuggle. We're gonna tug, we're gonna go far enough until that lasted break. That cord mm-hmm. that binds us can right. only take so much pressure before it snaps. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Then before so, before you fi- figure the issue out or come to the issue, now you've already attracted another relationship. And it, and it's that it's that feel good hormone at the beginning because we, we I want I'm gonna we're gonna talk about this too we have another therapist that's gonna come on with us you know in, in another segment but we talk about all of the different um, the different chemical reactions that happen when you meet somebody yes. new and yes. so it's just like just it's like it's, it's, it has the same effect as cocaine right so you so you get high. And then once that high wears down, now you got those issues, those those PTSDs, the anxiety, the depression, the insecurities, all of these things coming at the relationship. And now we're like, okay, man, why can't I have why can I stay in a healthy, good relationship, a loving relationship? Why can't I find that? And it's because you have all of these fragmented pieces and unhealthy, you know, broken pieces that have not you have not given yourself the time to heal it. And sometimes we think it's just time. It's not time. It's like what you say so eloquently. It's doing the success work. You must be willing to do the work. But Dr. Liz, I got I to gotta jump in right here because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. You got to realize something. The reason why I find myself or you find yourself or other people find themselves going back to the same, same type of relationship because that's your comfort zone. Mm. To someone else, this might be a mess. Someone else, that might be crazy. Someone else, that might be foolish. But to you, but to the I'm not gonna say you and I, but to the person that's in that, that's where they're the most comfortable at. That's where they operate at. That's where they feel like a fish in water at. Yeah, that's yeah. all they know. So they don't know what they don't know. Uh, yeah. I was yeah. listening to a lady talk once, and the lady said she was in a bad relationship, a bad marriage, as a matter of fact. Husband, it was a it was a mess. It was truly a mess. And when she, when she was asked why she didn't get out, her message, her answer was, I didn't know I could get out. That's true. I didn't That's know so I could just walk away. That's so true. That's so true. It's, it's, I it's, know because for me, the relationship, some, I've been in relationships that weren't healthy for me at all. But because I knew what I, I knew the pleasures that that relationship gave me, I stayed in it. Or I went back to it. It's 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 and I, it's in my head. I knew, fool, you crazy, <laughs> <laughs> fool, you fool, don't be a fool. <laughs> it's a, it's it's addicting. It's, and people, we 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 don't see it as that, but it's addicting. It's just like a drug because I mean, you're not taking in a chemical substance, but just like I said, that example about being on a roller coaster. You know, when you go up that roller coaster and you at the top, that anticipation for falling down is a chemical reaction yes. going on in the body. Yes. And because yes. we're not actually taking something or or whatever, we don't think of it that way. But it's just as potent and just as powerful, just as destructive or just as elevating and enlightening and, and enriching when you're in the right relationship. And that's why for me, I decided that no more settling. 
figure out what's going on with you because you're the common mm-hmm. denominator in this. You're bringing you. Don't worry about everybody fixing everybody else. Worry about what's going on with you. And it's so it's so much more it's so much more. I want to say just it's, it just it feels healthier. It's it's refreshing. You can you you know my daughter said this earlier today to me. She said about peace. Protect your peace. And sometimes you have to protect your yes. peace against yourself because yes. oftentimes we're stealing our own peace by the decisions that we make, but we have to go back to the root. Yes. And that's why I say you have to go back to the root and we talk about our money. We talk about our money. We're talking about our mental. Everything needs a stable foundation in order to grow and flourish on. Because if you build your house on a, on a, on a, on a shaky foundation, you know, the, the big bad wolf can huff and puff and he can blow that thing down. But when the, yes. when the little when the little pigs built that house on the, the brick and they built it on a steady steady foundation, the big bad wolf could huff and puff all he want, but he can't blow that down. And that's yes. what we want, right? That's what we yes. want. We want healthy, solid, stable relationships. But first of all, we have to look at ourselves because we always blame the other person. Yes, and and that's and that's and that's why the root and the root is very important because the root could be your root is a root that maybe is not deep enough or have some issues in your root, in you, in you. And it could be in, it could be in your partner. That root could be in your partner. The baggage could come from your partner. And then the baggage can come from you guys coming together. Because a lot of times when you come together, you don't always live your potential. You try to live the other person's potential. Or you guys try to meet in the middle. If one is more dominant than the other, are you living that person's potential versus your potential or versus the potential you guys bring together? All these things are root are root causes of stuff. And yeah. that's why it was important that you did that first work. You got your why and you got your future because if you got your why and future, it helps you determine what root you're, what root you're really working with. What are the real, what are the real roots, not the symptoms, not the not not the one not just that superficial stuff is when somebody says, well hey do you want to go to the movies no I don't want to go uh, well do you want to sit and cuddle no I don't want to sit and cuddle well do you want to do you want to go for a walk no I don't want to go for a walk you know everything you ask is no and it could it, it might not be the person just don't want to do anything the person may not want to do anything with you or it may, <laughs> or it, you yeah. don't know, you yeah. won't know these things until you start dealing with the root. Exactly. And the and root again comes yeah. from your first learning. How did you learn? How did you learn? How did you learn your love languages? Did you learn it by watching your family? Or did you right. read that book, The Five Love Languages? Or did you exactly. get outside counseling? Or exactly. did you are you modeling are you modeling beautiful couples? Are you modeling what you see on TV? Exactly. Because if you model what you see on TV, then you're programmed already. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I do. I want to share. I want to share what I wrote when I did my homework, and it was about the future because the present. It, I really, you know, was, I know you said you're not talking to somebody else. You're talking to yourself, but this is encompassed right. in it. The, the my. The, the are, you, are you doing? You're doing the first homework or the second homework? I did. I did the second homework. So you're doing your future. What's your best future in twenty twenty in twenty twenty three will look like? My best future in twenty twenty three. In twenty twenty three. And we did wait, the wait, fight. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're too fast. Slow your roll, slow your roll. Now, what I want to make sure is people understand you don't have to tell your, your success work to anybody. Because I don't want you to get in that in the idea that you're writing it so somebody can hear it. You're writing it for yourself and yourself will hear it. Now, if you want later on to share it with your spouse or significant other because you feel they can benefit from it, because you've already done the work on yourself and you're building your future. And you feel that they can help you or you can help them by showing them your stuff, you can show them. But you're writing your stuff for your own benefit. You're using simple words. You're making it plain. So Dr. Liz and I are reading ours out because we want to give you an example. We want you to see what we're talking about. All right? Absolutely. So don't think you to share yours. All right, go ahead, Dr. Liz. Absolutely. I apologize. I just want to get that caveat no, but, out. but the reason, and I heard you say that when we talked about it last week, and, and this is something, too, that, that, that I love that we're, what we're doing because – we're being transparent with it, but we're also in in the learning process ourselves. We're grasping, you know, grasping the information. And so, for me, oftentimes people will watch a podcast and then, you know, oh, that was a good podcast. But I'm saying that's why we put the journal in the description box so that you can purchase your journal. They even spell them by the cases, you know. But you can purchase your journals 
And this is the work that you do. And when we talk about how to set up your journal, you're going to look at the past, which I love doing this now. You look at the past journal and you look at the prep. Well, you said no present, but we, we compromised on that, y'all. And we looked at the, we looked at the present, and then we looked at we look at what we want in the future. So I broke it up in all three of those parts, and that's how I have always journaled. So even so so even in this work, it was it was it, it helped me to pull it all together. Like it it helped me to what, sincerely. Like as soon as we got off the podcast, I sat down. And I said, I'm gonna do it next week. No, I'm gonna do it right now. And I started thinking about it. These are all the things that I had thought about and were in me but I had never just actually written it down, right? Mm -hmm. Other than the ladies, you know, the list that you write, all the things that you want, the things, the things. I wrote that list down, but never wrote it in this context. So I was like, wait a minute, this is really good. So what it had me think, okay, it was commitment. Three chords, not easily broken. God first, then us. I want to give my love, partnership, love, kindness, respect, and a haven from the world mind body and spirit connection friendship understanding patience to patience and room to grow i want from my love to give me the same with a strong arm of protection and provision settling is not an option only one competition will be to outlove one another oh that's nice dr liz dr liz you single america <laughs> they go all day long <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I say she not settling. <laughs> the devil made me do that, Dolly. I'm sorry. Oh, I sure. <laughs> but that is that was so powerful for me. Yes. Yes, that it was. was powerful it was. for me because it I was. said, you keep saying you're not going to settle. Okay, but why? I had to go back to why aren't you going to settle? And and settling for me is anything short of that. Because I've, I've, it's, it's been a competition in certain relationships and I don't want that, never wanted that. So that, I know, and once you write it out there and you get it out there, then, then you know, that's, that's when the steps start to happen. And I love that. So that was really great. Thank you for that. With our success work, we all can improve. Every day we should be doing better, right? And then, Dr. Liz, I got to, you know, I, I, since I've talked to you and I listened to you in your podcast and, and, I, and we're talking about the show now and we're being transparent. Yes. So what I'm going to say may not, I, I may not phrase it right or it may not come out right, but I have to say it. Okay. So we're talking about root and listening when you said your stuff, that word, when you said competition, have you, in your relationships, have you noticed that people, you're competing against your mate or your mate feel like they're in competition, competition with you? So I'm going to be real transparent about this. It, it was and, not. And I'm sorry. I, I apologize. No, it's fine. No, no, no. I'm all, and it's okay because I'm, 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 in, I'm intentional with being transparent because this actually not, it, I, I don't think you can help anybody if you're not being authentic yourself. So for me, I've run up against a lot of competition where my, my, you know, ex-husband, my, you know, whomever was in competition with me. And for me, it was like, again, you know, not even comparing it to the, and that's why I related so much to the Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown uh, issue, because when you're, when you're, when you're a strong willed woman and you're pushing toward your goals, but you do know how to support and you come from an old fashioned background to where you support your husband, you know, that gets really, really sticky. If you don't have, if you're not in a healthy, totally healthy position and your mate is not in a healthy position because the competition then becomes you trying not to outshine them. But in essence, if you are coming together completely, then you want there, I think it's judge taller who I just, I mean, she, she just knocked me out of my chair when I heard her talk about this. She talked about where when she married her husband, for all intents and purposes, you know, she's the judge and he was in finances and he and he was coming out of a out of a, a divorce where, you know, like he lost pretty much everything. And so he was starting over. But what happened is he when they came together, she didn't come together being more than him. He didn't come together in a position of I'm less than because she has all of this. They came genuinely together 
and he put his practice on hold and supported her and it became theirs together. So they shine together brighter because you can do more uh, with, the, with the team that's united than you can apart. But had he came in in competition with her, like, like for instance, with me, you know, and I'll, I'll say it, when I was married, I was in yeah. real estate and I told, I just talked to my husband about it. At that time in real estate, you could refer your business to a, to an inspector. And I would tell him, you know, you're in, you know, home improvement, you do these things. It would be a good idea if you get your license in inspection and I can refer the people to you. Therefore, we keep the money in the house. And his reply to me was, you're trying to wear the pants and tell me what to do. Those are yes. the things that so 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 in essence, I could I was in a, a lose lose situation. If I didn't say anything, I'm sending four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars out of the house every time I bring my inspector in. But then on the other hand, I said, well, let's keep it in the house. But if it was my idea, it wasn't a good idea. But I understand mm -hmm. now it was because one, I always say, and I talk about this all the time. There's an interrogation period, whether we like it or not, at the beginning. And if you do a healthy interrogation with one another and you're transparent, you ask the right questions, you spend the right time, you don't ignore the red flags, you, you know, and, it, and, and, you, and you listen to your internal guidance system, you pray about it or what have you, then you have a good foundation. But oftentimes we go by the flesh. And when, and when you start off there, you got, you got, you, you got, you got hell to pay the captain, if they say, as they say, right? Yes. So, so, so definitely that's, and so that's a root in me, like you said about. I look for that. If there's any sign of competition, then I, I don't want anything to do with it because that's not okay. what the relationship should be. Okay. Thanks for being honest and opening uh, there, Doctor Liz. And I pretty, I hate to put you on the spot, but no, I, I'm open. It, 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 something was inside of me saying ass, so I had to ask that. It's and authentic. the reason why I said that. Because we're talking about the baggage, and mm -hmm. and we're talking about baggage, and we're looking at baggage as the root that that the cause of what happens in a relationship. And in order for you to make your relationship better, you got to realize what you got to go to the root cause. You got to find out what it is, and it, it can be as simple as it could be as simple as you got a bad match. You just got the wrong person. He he got the wrong person. You got the wrong person. She got exactly. the wrong person. Exactly. The bad match. Because exactly. you know, we don't know how to date. We don't know who to date. So we, if we don't know how to date or who to date, more likely what we get is what we got. <laughs> That's honest, though. I like that. Yeah. See, so we don't know. So that root could be a bad selection. That root could be non-communication, that we're not communicating what our goals are. You know, we're, we're looking at the marriage we see on TV. We're looking at the marriage of our mother and father, and we try to emulate that marriage. We haven't sat down and decided what's important to both of us together. We haven't opened our hearts together to each other and figured out what our goals will look like. Or we haven't done a good job of that. Absolutely. I agree. Are we going in, are we, a root could be we went into this marriage with the wrong expectations of each other. We went in, we could have went in marriage. We didn't we didn't know each other's strengths and weaknesses. What do you bring to the table? What I bring to the table, what we can do together. Right, right. So it's a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of things are baggage. It could be, it could be a child from another marriage. Right. Or it right. Could be a child from another relationship that just won't let go. Absolutely. It could be that you may have you you may have not you may have not grieved. Or you may not have not departed yourself from a relationship. It could be so many things that could be baggage that's going into your relationship that's holding you down or holding you back. I think what I hear you saying assumptions too. Oftentimes yes. we assume yes. we yes. assume yes. instead of instead of having that conversation. What do we? How do we see money? You know, how do we? How do do we, yes. do we save? Do we invest? Or even who's good at this? I mean. If he's yes. better at making a biscuit and you're better at making a financial investment, then let him make the biscuit and you make the financial investment because it's all Correct. coming together in one in one household to make you both better. And that's what I mean about not competing, making you both better. Is it a win-win for us, right? I think all, a lot of times because we are broken, fragmented, we don't know how to become a us. We don't know yes. how to become a us. It's still that it's still that prenup. Uh, mentality yes, right yes, it's not the yes. coming together and and it, for me too when you say that li looking at a marriage a family marriage my mother and father their marriage was fairy tale so when i got out here yes. 
I was I was totally toppled over. Like, wait, men don't open doors anymore? Wait, men don't, ladies don't act like ladies no more. We're not expected to act like ladies. I went on a date with somebody and got fussed out at the date. And like, this, this won't happen again because I sat on the inner side of the table. And he said, oh, you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't prefer the outer side. I, you know, my dad was a total chauvinist. You know, he believed on believed in the woman on the inner side of the bed, you know, certain things and walking on the inner side, because if the male is supposed to be the protector, then why am I walking on this side, you know? So yes. I was, I, that's been ingrained in me from a child. And so when I did it and he went totally bananas, not just a little, but like over the top, that's already oftentimes if that had happened, you know, and he's, you know, spending all this money on meal and everything or whatever, you know, and a lot of women wouldn't saw that red flag. Yes. But again, because I'm taking a stance of no settling, that was a red flag for me. That was enough for me to say, this is not something I want to pursue or go yes. continue on with. But we have to be willing to do that as we're doing our own work. Yes, because you said the red flag. A lot of times we don't, we overlook the red flags because we think of what we're going to get going to outweigh the red flags or we think we can negotiate the red flags in the relationship and on that note let's start reeling this in because dr yeah. so we want to in our time frame so we're gonna start reeling this in and we're gonna reel it in with this that this last concept i'm gonna introduce and then we're gonna reel it in all right the last concept we're gonna introduce is people are always in one or two states in their life a being you're in one or two states of being and it's a real easy concept, Dr. Liz, It's that you either in your past running from some type of pain, that you're running from some type of pain of your past, that's one state, that you're running from pain or you're working from pain of your past or relationship. Since we're talking about roots, and this is why we bring this up that you're either you work two states that you find yourself in one you're working from pain of your past that's the first that's one state or the other state is you're working towards your future you're looking towards your pleasure you're running to a moving towards a pleasurable outcome you're moving to your pleasure in business this is how most people sell most of their products in business they either cater to a person's pain they they get you out of that pain point or either they get you into your pleasure. Do you want a Rolls Royce? <laughs> Let me say this Bentley. <laughs> Let me get you in this Porsche. Let me get you in this Range Rover. <laughs> that is so good. That is, I love that concept. Or, or, or they tell you, have you ever been in this type of environment where you need help? You know, you got a sovereign proof. Like, for instance, those tax those tax people that says, do you owe IRS money? <laughs> the IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. Right, yes. <laughs> so IRS alone. Let yes. us, taxer, help you out. <laughs> <Yep>. That's <laughs> Relations good. <laughs> Relationships are the same exact way. You're either operating in the past, pain, or you're operating in the future, desire. Mm, that's good. Now, some people, some people are, are fortunate. They can be seasonal. They can have one season in pain and another season in pleasure. And there's other people stuck in one or the other. Mm. They, only want, they only want the next shining object, which they think is their desire, or either they're so stuck in their past, you ain't going to change me. I'm sorry. I've been hurt too many times, and I'm not going to let you in my life. Blah, 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 blah. Got it. <laughs> Other. <laughs> so that no Dr. <laughs> unless <laughs> I'm all in for the day. <laughs> I, this is good. This is a, where, where, look, where do I send you an invoice and you send me one? Because this has been a therapy session back and forth today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll see you on. <laughs> I'll in turn, I'll, I'll send you one too. <laughs> hey, you messing up, Dr. Lee. See, yeah. you, see you competing against. See, I knew. <laughs> but let me, can, can I yes. take us out with this last quote? Yes, please take us out. 
this is how they this is this window holiday season day is what the 22nd or 23rd uh, 22nd. The 22nd. today's the 22nd 22nd with three days for christmas um you know here i wish you and your family and everybody all all those in the sound of my voice that wish you the best for your for holidays matter of fact my prayer for you is that god come into your life and bless you and your family and show extreme mercy to whatever situation or whatever issues going on in your life right now we ask that that he bless you in such a way that if you don't shout, we'll shout for you. Because now is the time that we need to lean in and lean on each other because there's so much has happened in this world in 2023. There's so many, I mean, 2022, there's so many people that, that started 2022 that's not here with us now. And some of my loved ones, some of them are my brothers, some of my sisters, some of them are my mothers, some are cousins, some of aunties that we've lost along the way. And they're not here to see us, to see this season. To see it over. So we ask that if you're going through something right now, that God strengthen you. He strengthen your heart. He strengthen your family, and you be blessed. Looking for a, a beautiful, beautiful, blessed 2023. Uh, Absolutely. And wait, we're gonna see. We meet one more time, right? So I believe we meet. We meet next week, right? And that's Absolutely. before. Wait a minute. That's after Christmas, but before New Year's. After Christmas, so we'll before New Year's. Absolutely. More time. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So God continue to bless you and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate you tremendously for your time and all of your talents that you're bringing into the podcast. So before we leave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to put the link to the journals in the description box. And we'll also link this episode to the PTSD episode. There's some great information in that one as well. Listen, learn, and leverage the information. Bye for now and stay fearless. See you, Dr. Lewis.